Okay, and you'll forgive me if I mess up your name. Hey, hey, we're here with Mark Smiley. Yep. How are you doing? And now uh, we've got uh, all your artwork here. Exa exactly what, what what books do you do, or what, what exactly do you uh, do? Sure. Um, I write and draw a comic called Artesia, which is sort of a sword and sorcery fantasy comic book. So some of the art that, uh, that I brought with me today is from the comic book. Um, and then some of the art here is freelance work that I've done, mostly for gaming companies. So I've worked for uh, White Wolf and Wizard of the Coast and uh, AEG and a couple other companies. So um, some of the, most of the color stuff is for, uh, it's either collectible cards for AEG or, um, pages from um, EverQuest, uh, uh, did stuff for both the Dungeon Master's Guide and Players Handbook for EverQuest, and then um, Adventures of the Wizards of the Coast, which is like an epic level handbook, and uh, Forgotten Realms, and a couple other things. So, oh, that's cool. Uh, all mixed in. So, and then most of the black and white stuff here is from uh, uh, is from uh, White Wolf, which does almost all of their books in ah, okay. black and white. So. Now, it's like, what, what, what's the story with, uh, with, with your characters here? Uh, right, Artesia is kind of... Um, it's kind of a pagan Joan of Arc story. Um, it's about a woman whose mother was burned at the stake as a witch, and then uh, she, rather than follow her mother's path into magic, sort of chooses the path of war instead. And so it's it's epic military fantasy. It's uh, nice. sort of like, well, <laughs> they, it, it makes <laughs> Not it difficult a nice story, to draw, but yeah. but it, which is the, the the main problem with lots of you know sort of like lots of little figures running around in the background always just increases the time that you have to spend on a page. But so it'd be it'd be a lot easier if it was just sort of a more typical. Um, sort of adventure style fantasy story where it was just like a small little group of people but it's about essentially about armies and large right. groups so sort of a, it, it's, um, it's a different style of storytelling than I think in most <laughs> fantasy comics nowadays. Most fantasy comics to me nowadays are primarily d and adventure stories in the sense that it's about a small group of people that are about... You know, it's, like, it's, it's almost always a dwarf, an elf, a right. human, and a magician. <laughs> exactly. and everything. So it's like it's just a little bit different than that. Yeah, it's, um, the, the setting for it is, uh, is a bit more like Howard's world for Conan in the sense that it's humans only and so there are no elves, no dwarves, nothing like that. It's, it's just people with occasionally with spirits and demons and gods and stuff like that mixed in, but right. so which is also very much in the Howard tradition. But, um, but I, the, the elf dwarf tradition and for fantasy comics didn't seem to fit with the, the ethos of the world as well, so I just cut them all out. There you go. <laughs> I've left it with people. I was say, now, is that, is, that, is that the style comic that got you into wanting to do this, or like the old Marvel Conans, or...? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, Conan, Cerebus, the Aardvark, Dave Sims book, um, a bunch of, uh, uh, there was Warlord was actually a comic that was coming out. Uh, was it? In the, oh, okay, the, all right. It, there's, a, there's an old, like, sort of, like, late 70s, 80s comic. Oh, okay, all right, all right. I, I have then, heard of that. Uh, but actually, when I was growing up, there weren't that many fantasy comics out there at all, which is part of the reason that I wanted to do one. So, right. it, you know, sort of uh, just to find, to make a comic that I wanted to read, in a sense. So, um, since most fantasy comics have, t have tended to be in that kind of Conan, Red Sonja, kind of barbarian fantasy kind of mode, this is, it's a slightly different take. It's this sort of more like, a George Martin style okay. of writing, in a sense, that it's sort of a gritty, complicated, political sort of... So you get a little bit of everything in, 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 in the storyline. Yeah. It's not just... It's, it, it's kind of like cross-genre. Uh, yeah. It, sta like it, stays, it stays fantasy, but it kind of branches out a little bit. Yeah, I think that for some writers, uh, some writers like to take it, different types of stories and sort of segregate them into different kinds of books so that if they have a fantasy story, they'll write a fantasy story. If they have a science fiction story, they'll have a science fiction story. For whatever reasons, when I have a storyline, I just wind up working it into the same world, the same characters, the same ethos. So in a sense, I try to do lots of different kinds of storytelling all in the same place rather than saying, hey, I have a new storyline, so I need to create a whole new world with a whole new set of characters to tell this particular story. I just stick with the same. Right, so this is definitely not for the X-Men crowd or... Uh, for better or for worse, it's, no. it's, it's, yeah, it's not a typical... Which, yeah. which, which, which is a good thing now, because it's like you don't have a lot of the, a lot of the independents out there. Uh, so. Yeah, when I first started out, I was uh, originally published by a company called Sirius, which at the time was doing uh, Dawn, Poison Elves, Akiko, Scary Godmother, books like that. So I, say, I remember Poison Elves. I, I yeah, really was, liked Poison Elves. That was, <laughs> a, that was a great was, uh, story. It was a great, yeah, that was one of my, uh, my favorite fantasy books. I've been, actually, it still is, although Drew's not putting out quite as often as he used to. So. Um, but, uh, you know, Sirius to me was a great sort of uh, indie style company of sort of, you know, 
nothing really particularly superhero oriented, but a lot of fantasy, science fiction type books. Which, so. which, which, which to me, it's, it's, it's like I think of independent. I think of uh, the old warp graphics, the, uh, the, the the Elf Quest, yeah, and uh, all, all 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 the spin-off stuff they've done. So it's uh, which which they've just recently been uh, not picked up by, but DC is actually publishing the new Elf Quest right. stories. Which I'm not sure if I like that or not. It's 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 weird because it's still under Warp Graphics, but it's being released to DC. And yeah, like, there's a and considering the DC also picked up a humanoid, sort of taking them under their wing also, and then a bunch of other sort right. Of and it's it's kind of scary when they get some of it, like either Marvel or DC when they get some of the the independents because you're worried that they're going to start tweaking the characters and playing with the characters. Yeah, you always have to hope that the uh, that the contract still allows the company editorial control. In a exactly. Sense that which, when you, which so yeah, far yeah. in that it seems to have done. But like now if, if, if you could work for any of the, the, the bigger companies, is there one that you would prefer because they seem to let you have more control than others? Oddly enough, I have I'm probably one of the few comic book artists that has absolutely no interest in working for either Marvel or DC. Uh, I think that uh, almost everyone that I know has, you know, a character that they grew up with that they would be like, if I could I'd do that book for them and then Right, like we talked to Brian before and he said if he could do Wolverine he would Right. Specifically <laughs> Wolverine, yeah. yeah. It's like I, he would do the X Men if he had to, but yeah, it's for most uh, almost everyone I know is either you know, the, the X Men, Batman. There's like a handful of guys that are characters that you know people are like, you know, that's the guy. If I could, I'd do that book. Right. Uh, and actually, although every now and then, uh, Joe Linsner, for example, when he got a chance to do a Marvel book, uh, I remember it wasn't. It was actually um, a really he picked a really unusual character to to get us to do a book on. I and off the top of my head, I can't even remember who it was. It was like a Martian Manhunter or something very similar. It was, it was like a um, something completely off the beaten track in terms of what you would normally think of that like top five ten characters right. that most artists have in their head of like you know kind of like when like somebody like books. Miller comes in and like just kind of reshapes everything they've done. It's like yeah. okay, well this is what you've been doing. Flip there now deal with that and then, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go back and do my book again now. I'm gonna go back and do Sin City again. Yep. If, just just for pure fun. You, 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 you said you never had one. If you uh, could do one. Well, well, I guess if if I like if somebody put a gun to my head and was like, you have to do a book, <laughs> and we're gonna, it would either be uh, Red Sonja, uh, which obviously is no longer with Marvel, but I think Dynamite has it now. So. I, th I think it was Dynamite. Right. Yeah. So um, would either be Red Sonja or um, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm drawing a blank on uh, Doctor Strange. That'd be the Strange. other, would be the other sort of like book that I would actually really sort of have a lot of fun with. I mean, I'd love to see Conan come back. They keep trying to bring him back, and he just can't quite get there. A couple of different companies have done it. Well, I think Dark, Dark Horse's run on Conan, I think, is is it's good. Is, is, is it really? Cause yeah. it's like, I haven't, I haven't had a chance a, to look at the Dark Horse yet, and it's like beautiful art, um, really nice. Dark Horse is. is, is because it's like sometimes it's like they'll grab the story and they'll start off strong and then they'll kind of fizzle out. I do kind of think that that might. Yeah. <laughs> They're better for short stories. Since this is being recorded, I should say. But that does, I do get that sense from the from the Conan series that it, like you said, started off really really nicely, sticking very closely to a lot of original Howard stories for the first issues. But I, I am getting that feeling now that they are moving further and further away in a sense from what could be considered a Howard Cannon and into right. sort of like this other stuff which uh, tends to, and then um, Carrie Nord was like the perfect artist for it and I don't think he's doing all of the Conan titles that they're putting out now so it's sort of but if, uh, those would I would recommend looking at them they're, they're, the, the first initial PC Nord run was right. really nice looking very very true to Howard so we're going to have to look into those then all right. Well, thank you for your time. I sure, appreciate no it, and uh, I hope I hope you sell many books here today. Thank you. Thank you. Plenty of them.